Jennifer Swain is the program manager for the nonprofit organization YouthSpark and they're a future, not a past in Georgia. A campaign to stop the prostitution of children in Georgia. The campaign is addressing the issue through research, prevention, intervention, and education. Danielle Stroger, 16 years old and a junior at Carver New School of the Arts, works as a peer counselor with YouthSpark. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Jennifer, and this is Danielle. Uh, she's a little bit shy, so I'm gonna um, hide her for a minute. But um, I'll tell you a little bit about our program, but the main thing that we do is we change minds. And a person may ask, how do you change minds and what do you do to change minds? And each and every one of us in here, no matter how old you are, how young you are, where you come from or where you're going, you have the power to change someone's mind. What I want to tell you guys about is an issue that faces and touches almost everybody, whether you know someone or not. And you can raise awareness. Um, there's one business out here that makes more money than Google, McDonald's, and Walmart combined. That's a lot of money. Unfortunately, that business is human trafficking. Uh, this is a heavy topic and we talk about, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about what happens right here in our own community. Because when people hear the word human trafficking, their mind takes them absolutely somewhere else. This is not something that happens here. This is what I see on TV. But what we want to do today is change our mind about who is vulnerable, who does this happen, and how can you, each and every one of us as individuals, join this fight. Our agency, Youth Spark, we were formerly the Juvenile Justice Fund. We have been working to save the lives of at-risk youth, boys and girls, over the last 12 years that come in contact with the Fulton County Juvenile Court. We ignite justice and inspire change for some of Georgia's most vulnerable youth, and we don't do that by telling them what they need to do. We do that by talking with them and deciding what the next plan is. I'll give you some more stats about that, but what I want to do first is make something very, very real for you, because there are so many people that may be victims of child sex trafficking, but there are so many more people that are in your community or in your schools that are vulnerable. And we have heard testimony from pimps that say that we will talk more to your child and listen to your child longer than you will. We give voices. Sometimes in the Voices Project is a prevention program, and what we do is we give the tools for young people to use their story and share their voices and shout about it. And what I'm going to allow right now is Danielle to shout about her voice and what she has given and learned over the last two years in our program. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, before I came to Voices, I was not... My head was not screwed on right at the time. Um, when I was in sixth grade, I was sent to I was turned to school the first month of school, actually. And I didn't get out until ninth grade. And being at Carver now is like a new experience for me because this is like my first time being in a regular school where I actually get to learn. and. They don't just throw packets at us and just tell us to do it and give us a certain time to be finished with. Um, when I was 12, me and my mom, we had problems. I ran away. I got put on probation. And that's how I met Jennifer and the Voices Girls. I joined the Voices Girls. I actually had an option to either I was going to do time in juvenile or take the class. I didn't like neither one of the decisions. <laughs> so I ended up taking the class. I was really forced because I didn't want to do it. But um, as I, but when I first got there, I wasn't pleased with it. I did because um, I was very antisocial then and I didn't get along with other of my peers, so I got to know Jennifer, and we touched heart to heart, and she, it was like a new me after I started there. Like, 
I wasn't getting in trouble in school. I come there every Thursday, would sit down, and she'll ask me on a scale of one to 10, how's my day going? When I first started off, I was always ones, zeros, or fives. But now, every, set, every Thursday I go in, she asks me, with my skill, one to 10, and I'm always a 10 now. Because of that, um, because of that, I would like to thank the voices in Youth Sparks, because before then, I was like, I was lost, and I didn't know what to do with myself, and I was going to the end of the road. But Jennifer and other people in the youth sports, they helped me to learn how to be myself, but also be a better person at the same time. And Voices Girls, like, it's not always, it's not just about a group of girls coming in, just talking and leaving. We all got to know each other. We all got to grow upon each other. And everybody touched heart to heart. And um, <laughs> but like being being 16 and standing here now, it's kind of difficult for me. But like. I want to be able to talk to other girls and other youth and let them know that it's okay. It's not a bad thing to make bad decisions because we all make bad decisions. We don't always make good decisions in life. Everybody has bad decisions and bad decisions, it gives you a good story to tell. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna hold that. Hold that. <laughs> I'm gonna let her hold the mic because I'm used to screaming at people. Because one of the things that I do the most is I talk to anybody who hasn't heard that child sex trafficking is something right here in Atlanta that happens and affects not only just our young girls but our young boys as well. We look at the issue at Youth Spark as a supply and demand issue because here in our country, the buying and selling of children for sex is the third largest money-making business here in this country, outside of drugs and guns. The third largest money-making business. Now, I can sit here and try to explain it to you because you heard the term human trafficking, sex slavery, domestic minor sex trafficking. What does it all mean? Well, human trafficking is the, is the overarching term. And if you think about it, just replace drugs with human. And how sad is that? Because with drugs, I can sell that to everybody in here, and I have to go and re-up my product. It's a one-time thing. Unfortunately, with young girls and with young boys, I can sell them to everybody in here and never have to re-up my product, and that makes this business much more lucrative than people really understand. Now, I'd like to be able to give you a list of the things that you can look at and that you can say, okay, what does the victim look like? How can I help? Unfortunately, I can't let you check off. I can't say, well, Usually she's not in school. Usually she has a history of sexual abuse. Because let me tell you, almost 90% of children that are bought and sold for sex have a history of sexual abuse because someone has already violated their personal space. Now, I run this girls group with lots of girls that come through the system and they actually need a little voice and they actually need someone to help process and tell them what is exploitation. You can't know if you're being exploited if you don't know what it means. Now, Danielle started the program two years ago. And that's not a bad thing as we get ready for our second graduation <laughs> ceremony because what I tell her is that I learned a long time ago that I can't tell someone that's 16 years old, I'm not, you know, under 18 anymore, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but all I can say is I can't get the message across as effectively as she can. And so what our program does is work alongside them and bring the youth to the table with us. We don't create a curriculum and give it to them we build it alongside one another and we help them to empower themselves and also empower each other. There may be lots of times that I say to Danielle, can you get them to do this for me? Because I can't do it and it sounds differently from them. And I said to her, do you realize your power? Do you realize your power that if you talk about your past experiences, those things that break your heart, 
you will open up and every other girl in there would open up their experience and what happened? Yeah, it happened. <laughs> Youth has a power, and I'm speaking to the adults now, and also for each, every person and individual. You have the power to help the person next to you. How many of you look at your teachers and you all you hear is wah, 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 wah. But if you have a student group that comes in or another person that tells you something that you didn't quite know to be true, it sounds a little bit differently. The average age of entry into prostitution is 12 to 14 years old. Nobody wakes up at their 16th birthday. Nobody wakes up at age 21 and decides, today is the day I'm going to go and sell myself for sex. It does not happen like that. I want you to wipe away what you think you know about trafficking, what you've seen on SBU, what you've seen on MTV, what you've heard in the rap music. Wipe that away because each and every one of you have the power to change somebody's life that could be sitting right next to you in your school, at your bus stop, in your own family, at the table. You can raise awareness across so many lines. And if each one reaches one, then when we begin to talk about trafficking, your heart won't break and send you overseas somewhere. Your heart will understand it. Because unfortunately, if a young girl is bought here from any other country, whether it's Cambodia, Thailand, Mexico, anywhere else in the world, if she's bought here for the purpose of buying and selling sex, Immigration Customs Enforcement and the FBI will come in and they will scoop that child up. She will absolutely be a victim. They will give her family visas. They will work with her. She'll get services. But if some reason, if that child grows up down the street from Grant Park, or if that child grows up in the West End, or if she grows up in Rome, Georgia, or Augusta, she's not looked at as a victim. She's looked at as someone who asked for it. Now, whether you can say, ha ha, look at that girl. She's the promiscuous one. You laugh at the girls at school who has the bad reputation. But have you ever realized that the power of your own voice can change someone's life. A kind word can change someone who's making the decision to never come to school again. This is not the place for me. I use the tools that I have to teach other young people how you can save a girl who may be going through some of the same things because nobody wakes up and decides to become a prostitute. It doesn't happen that way. Our organization absolutely looks at not only who the victims are, but who are the adults that need to be held accountable? So we have done lots and lots of research, and we've been able to go out and speak to hundreds and hundreds of people. And I can't go into a school and say, let me talk to all of your kids about sex trafficking. But I can say, Danielle, tell me how it can be said better than this. How would you and your peers hear it? And so we have to work alongside any of those. Do you want to tell a little bit about what we do in Voices? Because we don't just talk about trafficking. We look at the whole person, where they are. I don't want to give you a lesson without finding out how you feel today. I don't want to tell you about self-esteem if you're not having a great day. And newsflash, everybody doesn't have a great day every day. It's OK that you're a zero today. But by the end of the group session, we want to get you to a 12. And we want to make sure that you can use your own voice to not only help you and yourself, but help your peers as well. Because adults have a way of saying, Let's not talk about sex trafficking. Shh. Let's put that under the rug. That's a dirty little secret that Atlanta has. My kids don't need to talk about that. We don't need to hear about it. Newsflash, they're already talking about it. They already know who's doing it. We need to empower them to teach them how to help people beside them instead of judging them because you don't know their story. Well, in Voices, um, what we do, we all come in and like, how many of us is it? Well, everybody don't call me every Thursday. <laughs> but <laughs> but we, <laughs> we come every Thursday, and um, I do. We come, and we sit down, and like I said, Jennifer asks everybody. We go around and ask everyone on a scale of 1 to 10 how they're doing today. Somebody might be a 5, 10, 7, 3. Um, then we have, every day there's a Voices, we call it the Voices, which is actually a poem or a saying or something to uplift everybody's spirits in there because everybody don't come in there happy. So after the Voices, we do different activities like we go, what we, we run, do that stuff, we do walks and stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> we do walks and stuff, and um, like we just want to come out and help the youth and young, not only females but also males, and to show them that it's it's okay to it's. Nah, I'm so scared. Um, it's, <laughs> it's okay to be Okay. We teach them that it's okay to be who you are and it's not what you're called. It's what you answer to. We teach them that they are bold, they are beautiful, and they're strong. And they're not just a statistic on this board. You can take this one piece of, of, of paper here and you can go out, each and every one of you, and raise awareness to somebody else who didn't know that sex trafficking and human trafficking exists. This will give you all of your stuff. But what I ask each and every one of you to do is to not only, when you see that person engaging in certain behavior, don't laugh at her. You don't know what her journey is. November is National Runaway Prevention Month. Did you know that? Within the first 48 hours of a child running away from home, one in three will be lured into prostitution. It only takes two hours. How many children run away? How many children are on the streets in Atlanta? And what I just encourage each of you to do is to just educate yourself because you are a walking, talking mind changer yourself. I will talk to anybody, and you may see some of the pictures, but I will talk to anybody about it. I have been in the grocery store and said, have you heard that 300 to 400 girls are commercially sexually exploited every month in Georgia? I embarrass her a lot because I say that, <laughs> did you know that 7,200 men seek to buy sex from adolescent girls each month in Georgia? Usually they look at me like I'm crazy, but then they ask me for my card because they want to know more. Each and every one of you have the power to be able to do this. So as you see the sex trafficking things on the news, as you see young girls who look like they're going the wrong direction, don't laugh at them. Pull them in and talk to them and say, hey, how are you feeling today on a scale of one to zero? That will unlock the door and it will absolutely help you change your mind. And one of the things that we want to leave behind as our idea worth sharing, our idea that we want to make sure that you realize and that you know is that no matter what, it's not your past. It is your future. And you can help somebody else here recognize and realize that it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter, you know, what you happened before. Home. You can start over again today and try again tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>